Good morning, people. There was a new home base status report that came with today's update. So for today's video, we're gonna take a look at it. Uh, there are a couple things I wanted to point out before we get into it. Uh, if you own the Panda Team Leader skin, apparently you got a free edit style today. And this is what she looks like. And I was able to get this by just logging in. Here's what Sid looks like originally, by the way. And I know it said Sid, but she's gonna be an edit style of this skin right here, which is Panda Team Leader. And looks like I also got a loading screen. And this was part of the Web of Corruption set, which are the skins you see in that loading screen. But yeah, this one says one of your cosmetic items now includes additional items. And the second one said, this item belongs to you. Thanks for your patience. But yeah, just wanted to point that out because that was the first thing I noticed when I logged in. We also got a V-Buck mission with this morning's update and it's located in Candy Valley. You're not going to see it on Fortnite DB, but we were able to find it when we looked and it's a power level 70 ride the lightning. Speaking of which, you're not going to see V-Buck missions as often this venture season compared to last venture season because there's less mini boss mission alerts. So you may want to take advantage and complete them whenever you see them. And right now we have one in Candy Valley. Also, they added the Mikasa and Levi bundle and it costs 2,200 V-Bucks. Looks like it comes with Mikasa. And here's her edit style. We also have her back bling, which is called Or Light. It says it lights up at night. Oh, that actually sounds like it could be useful. Uh, we also have Captain Levi, and he also has an edit style. There it is. We also have the Transformation Serum back bling. And we also got a loading screen that came with this bundle. There's also a special operations gear bundle. Looks like they came with a back bling with edit styles. It also came with this Thunder Spear Flyer back bling. We also got a glider, as well as a harvesting tool called Snap Blade. There's also an emote. Oh, that's, that's cute. It's called Titan Run Rush. This one's called Titan Run Rampage. And this one's called Titan Run Freestyle. What? Oh my. Okay, the emotes are kind of cool. I'm kind of liking the emotes. They're all traversal, by the way. So yeah, that gear bundle is going to cost 1600. Uh, you can buy the skins by themselves as well as the emotes by themselves. Yeah, just wanted to point that out because I know some of y'all like Attack on Titan. And speaking of Attack on Titan, it looks like Aaron's quests are currently available. So you should be able to unlock him now as well. I think we may try to complete these quests on Twitch later. I'll leave a link to my Twitch in the description. Be sure to follow if you haven't already. But yeah, just want to mention that for those who like Attack on Titan. You may want to check out those bundles and complete those quests. Anyways, when it comes to the home base status report, the first thing they said was the Scurvy Show's venture season is in full swing. While you're taking a break from living your pirate's dream or tackling Yar's questline, visit the event and weekly store over the next few weeks for a variety of spring themed heroes and the Easter egg launcher making their return. Make sure to grab any you've missed out on. Apparently Cottontail Eagle Eye is gonna be returning on April 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And she has the perk that makes your phase shift drop three egg bombs, which deal 55 base damage to nearby enemies. She also has phase shifts, shark tower, and teddy. I wouldn't consider her to be one of the best heroes, mainly because those three eggs don't really deal a whole lot of damage. But we have reviewed her. I'll leave a link to that review in the description if you want to go check it out. And again, she'll be available on April 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Rabbit Raider Jonesy is also going to be returning on April 12th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I would recommend getting him and maxing him out. Uh, not only do I use him as my commander, but I also use him in my support team. So definitely a hero I would recommend getting and maxing out. I'll leave a link to some Rabbit Raider gameplay in the description if you want to go check it out. And that's pretty much everything we're getting this week. As for next week on April 19th at 8 p.m. Eastern, Dashing Hair Ken's going to be returning to the event store. And his commander perk allows your Kunai Storm to drop egg bombs, which each deal damage. I would consider him to be more of a fun hero to use, not necessarily one of the best heroes to use. But yeah, we've already reviewed him as well. So I'll leave a link to that review in the description with the others. And we're also getting the Easter egg launcher on April 19th. And I do consider this to be a fun weapon to use. It's not the best grenade launcher. Obviously the pot shot's better, 
but it's still a pretty fun weapon to use. And it's the only grenade launcher that shoots proximity grenades. I wouldn't recommend getting this, but whether or not you want to max it out, that's sort of up to you. Oh, they also told us what we're going to get the week after that. On April 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern, Bunny Brawler Luna is going to be returning to the event store. And her commander perk makes sure shockwave drop three egg bombs, which can each deal damage to nearby enemies. So I guess you could use her if you're trying to buff your shockwave, but not really one of the best heroes in my opinion. She also has shockwave, lefty and riding going commit. She does have some good abilities though. And apparently that's the only thing we're gonna get during the week of April the 26th. Anyways, last thing they went over was bug fixes. And it says they fixed an issue with the phase shift forward commander perk that prevented it from applying the 140% movement speed increase when used. They also fixed an issue where players would receive a generic network connection lost message when loading into a save the world mission without it installed. They fixed an issue where the audio wouldn't play during videos before and after the tutorial. They fixed an issue where console players cannot see duplicate perks on defenders. They also fixed the issue where the hoverboard could appear invisible when players mounted it. That actually happened a couple times during our live streams on Twitch. I'm gonna miss that bug. And they also fixed the issue where the riot shield husky would leave the shield in the world after being eliminated. So after today's update, we should no longer see those riot shields laying around everywhere. Or at least according to the patch notes, it looks like they fixed it. And that sums up everything that was in the home base status report. So yeah, like I said, we're not going to get anything new over the next few weeks. But I'm still going to be uploading some content for y'all, both Save the World and non-Save the World related. We got a few videos I'm currently working on, so hopefully y'all will stay tuned for that. But yeah, as far as Save the World goes, it doesn't look like there's going to be anything new at it over the next few weeks. But yeah, that sums up everything that's in the home base status report. Before I go, I did want to give a huge shout out to everybody who's been using Creator Code A1. Really appreciate your support. But yeah, that'll do it for this one. I hope you all have an amazing day and thanks for watching.